Papa Boom, thank you for a $10 super chat. I am getting back into FPV. I'm buying all new gear, but I can't decide between DJI or the new Fat Shark system. Which would you suggest? Ooh. That's a tough one, Papa Boom. Papa Boom. That's a tough one. Um, I, I think that it's close. Okay. Let's talk this through. And some of you will have heard some of this before, but I just got done reviewing the new Walksnail 1S video transmitter. And I think the new Walksnail 1S video transmitter kind of changes the equation a little bit in Walksnail's favor. Not, I'm not saying that Walksnail is, is the favorite, but it tips the odds a little more. <laughs> Abra the Ham. Abra the Ham says, FPV learning curve. That is exactly right. That's exactly right, Aber. The problem is that people think that the FPV learning curve goes up like this forever, and they're like, this is, I'll never get this. But what actually happens is, this is your first year in FPV. For some people, it's less. For some people, maybe it's more. You're like, this is impossible. I'll never learn this. It's so much. No matter how much I learn, there's still more. When will it end? Ah, oh. Oh, I kind of got this. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep, that's about it. <laughs> okay. Um, so, in short, the DJI V2 system, not the new Goggles 2, not the new Avada O3 Air Unit stuff. Set that aside. The previous generation, the DJI FPV Goggles V2 with the Air Unit and the Vista, what it's got going for it is that it is extremely proven. The performance is excellent. We know it's excellent. It's had all the bugs and shaken out. Uh, it is rock solid. The price is comparable to Walksnail. But Walksnail is still at the we're trying to make it better stage of their development curve, okay? And it is still, in my opinion, not at the level that DJI is at. The Walksnail performance is absolutely usable. There are people who use it as their primary control uh, video link. It is satisfactory, but DJI is better. And there are still things that Walksnail needs to do better that, like, for example, in my opinion... The 50 megabit per second uh, bit rate in Walksnail is not that much better than 25. It's not really a step up. And we know that there's a lot of room to improve there because in DJI, when you go from 25 to 50, it gets a lot better. The 1080p for Walksnail is not that much better than 720p. I just don't, I think those are features that are there on paper, but they still haven't realized their full potential. Um, DJI hardware is damn near indestructible. Not 100% indestructible, but compared to the, oh, I blew an ESC, oh, I blew a video transmitter, oh, I broke a camera. The DJ, I have I have Cadix Vistas that have been transferred between four different quads because everything else on the quad is trash and the Vista is still going strong. It's damn near indestructible. And at least in the USA, the price of the DJI goggles has come down significantly from close to $600 to more like $460, $470. Every time I say that, people outside the USA are like, ah, we still have to pay full price. Stop saying that, Bardwell. But if for when the USA, you know, that's, uh, that's how it is. So that's the DJI V2. Now, the disadvantage of the DJI V2 is that it is potentially going to be end of life only because we know that the O3 system is here. The Avada is here. It's got the O3 air unit in it. There are rumors about the O3 standalone air unit coming out sometime soon. Uh, Madstech made a post about that. Nobody knows when it's actually coming, but we assume that that day will come sooner probably rather than later. The Goggles 2 are here. They have higher performance. And it's questionable, though, because... DJI, the, the older V2 goggles are also compatible with the Avada. They just do 810 resolution instead of 1080. So does that mean that DJI is planning on keeping that older generation around for us FPV pilots? We don't know, but we at least have to wonder. Certainly DJI is not doing like ra radical development, new features and stuff on that product. The, the, the last firmware we got for that was because the Runcam Wasp came out. 
a new camera required a new firmware. But we're not going to get any big fi- feature updates or anything. It's basically done. And when it when it end of life, then we won't get it anymore. The, uh, now, the Walksnail system, the performance is not as good as DJI, but it's got a lot of potential for the future. Walksnail is hungry, and they're doing things like releasing the 1S video transmitter. The Walksnail 1S video transmitter weighs about 10 grams with the camera, runs on a 1S battery. DJI doesn't have anything like that. And it's surprisingly good and creates an opportunity that DJI just doesn't really fit. So which would you get? Personally, I still feel like the performance of the DJI system and the fact that the hardware is damn near indestructible, that's a a place to be for me, especially now that the FPV WTF team has made it possible to get the full DJI or the full Betaflight OSD in the DJI goggles. As long as you have firmware 06 uh, on the goggles and not 0015, Mm, but I do. And so that's an option for me. So every DJI, every every quad I built, I just built three new quads for myself. Cadix Vista went in it, rooted it, put the WTF OS on it. And now I'm as happy as I could possibly be. If, if, if that hadn't happened, I'd be thinking harder about Walksnail because they natively support the full DJI, uh, the full Betaflight OSD. Um, I feel like for me, DJI still has the edge. Uh, Walksnail, the hardware is not as reliable, which is a very high bar. It's not that it's unreliable, but DJI is more reliable. And uh, also, yeah, the performance is not quite there. Uh, but... But that may change in the future. For right now, I still feel like I would buy the DJI V2. If you care more about the the 1S video transmitter, maybe the Walksnail is going to appeal. If you care more about the fact that they are actually hungry and fighting for their market share and they're developing things that maybe other people won't, the Walksnail may be more appealing. Raven points out that Walksnail is better for long range. That's a very good point. Uh, DJI caps out at 13 kilometers. You simply cannot go past about, I think it's 13.3 kilometers is the actual distance. Uh, uh, no matter what you do with antennas or anything, as soon as you hit 13.3 kilometers, you lose, you lose link and you have to come home. So if you're, tr- if you're doing long range past 13 kilometers, Walksnell can do it. Walksnell, uh, Wesley Vardy had it out, I think past 13 kilometers or 30 kilometers. So Walksnell better for long range for sure. Yeah. Who goes that far? Long range pilots. That's who goes that far. Good point. Troncat points out. That's a very good point, Troncat. Troncat points out. Thank you. uh, Rotoriot has a 30 day. You would think it would be on their front page. Where's their front? Where's their 30 day? Uh. 30 day money back guarantee. So Rotorite has a th- I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a little affiliate link on this because why not? Um 30 day money back guarantee. They will literally send you a packing slip to mail it back to them if you don't like it. Uh so if you aren't sure whether this is gonna work for you, you could just decide to take Rotorite up on their 30 day money back guarantee. Worth a try. Yeah, DJI doesn't have that. 